is not enough without under without addressing the underlying challenges that exist with regard to income distribution and earnings for our middle class uh, individuals in our society. Even more pointedly, uh, the middle three quintiles, so this is the, the point that I want to make, saw their share of national income drop from about 53%, 52.9, down to 46.4%, a relative drop of 12%. That's the middle 60% of income earners in the United States. In a democracy, as a matter of politics, this trend is at the very least challenging and slightly destabilizing. Some people might want to connect it to some of the things that we now call the Tea Party. It's a matter of economics in the United States. It's unsustainable. You don't have to be a Keynesian, you don't have to be a monetarist, you don't have to be a supply sider. Um, when 70% of GDP is driven by consumption and 60% of the population is seeing their real income shrink, you got a problem. The wealthiest slice of Americans can only buy so many cars, computers, homes. Eventually, the other 80% uh, of the population need to see growing purchasing power if we're to see our economy grow. Um, by the way, the only other time that I could find uh, that looked a little like this was in the 1920s. It's the last period in U.S. history when income and wealth distribution looked like this. If you read Too Big to Fail or most of the, uh, uh, the stories that are now told about the 2008 crash, Goldman Sachs and AIG had a big argument about what the price of the mortgage securities were that AIG held and how much margin had to be put up. Billions of dollars were at stake. There was no systematic referee to call what that margin requirement should be. Under the Dodd-Frank bill, most of those things that we call derivatives, securitization, one form or another, will go through either exchange traded facilities, that's where prices are actually reported, just like on the stock exchange or any of your commodity or futures exchanges, but maybe more importantly, they will have clearing house mechanisms to say that one party owns the clearing house X number of dollars so they can give it to the other party that should be receiving the margin because the prices went up. And, uh, I think the financial system is a way to spread risk. It's also a way to spread pain. If you don't deal with the underlying causes, you're, you're almost certain to revisit it. Um, I look forward to uh, the discussions we can have um, in the weeks ahead and certainly here this afternoon. But on balance, um, a good start, but we have major, major issues to deal with on the structural imbalances in our economy if we really want to avoid a repeat of the 2007 crisis that has caused so much pain.